Hi everybody, my name is Miss Lindsay and I am one of the youth and teen librarians here at the Winnetka Northfield Public Library District. Welcome to Crafts as Seen on TikTok. Uh, today we are going to be making a craft as seen on the popular social media app TikTok um, and duplicating it in our own way. So if you haven't picked up a kit yet with your materials, make sure you do that. They're available at the Winnetka branch via curbside pickup. If you have picked up your kit, what you should have found inside is a canvas with a taped line down the middle, a single line drawing of a bird, a color of paint, you should either have blue, yellow, purple, or pink, a brush or sponge of some kind, two colors of thread, one white, one matching your paint, and a needle encased in some belt. Uh, so for this uh, this craft, I have gone ahead and printed out a single line bird. I think this is a great beginner single line drawing to go ahead and stitch on our DIY embroidered canvas today. However, if you want something different, more challenging, less challenging, all you have to do is Google single line drawing and find one you like and print it out. Be warned that the more little tiny areas and loops there are, the more difficult it will be. We've only got a couple of those on here. So this is a nice, good beginner practice if you've never sewn something before. So. The first thing you want to do is paint your canvas. You'll see that it should be taped with a nice little line that says paint up here. That is where we want to paint up above. We've lined up the tape so that exactly half of the canvas is above the tape um, and that will create a nice clean line for us to paint against. So you'll open up your paint and you can go ahead, you don't have to get any dishes dirty, find a palette, anything like that. You can go ahead and just squeeze a quarter size or so, maybe a little bit less. Uh, paint straight onto that portion of your canvas. So for reference, this is about how much I have squeezed for the time being. I can always add more. And I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and just spread it all over that line, that side. Uh, the taped line will act as a barrier. It's been uh, squished down pretty tight, but you might want to just make sure it's really, really nice and secure to your canvas because it will create that barrier between the blue and the white side of the canvas or purple, yellow, or pink, depending on what colors you've received. If you don't squeeze out enough paint, you can always add a little more. You can't take away paint though, so be careful as you're squeezing paint out of your bottle. Now we're going to do this a couple of different times, letting it dry in between each layer. That way we have a nice, thick, even coat of paint on our colorful side of the canvas. So go ahead, finish your painting, let it dry, and then come back to it a couple of times until you are satisfied with the amount of color that you have. You can't stitch or tape or do anything with the canvas until it is completely dry. So go ahead and paint, see you in a bit. All right, once your paint is done drying, you can go ahead and start the next step. Here's our dry canvas. I've done as many coats as I want to. Again, that's entirely up to you how much paint you really wanna use. When you're done and it's completely dry to the touch, nothing comes off, you're able to really touch it, um, you'll go ahead and peel the tape off. So you'll take it from the back and very carefully peel all the way down, creating a really nice straight line of paint. And there we go. There is our canvas all ready for the next step. So the next step is to somehow get your design of your single line drawing, in our case, the bird, onto your canvas. You'll take the enclosed sheet, or if you've chosen a different design, make sure you print it on regular printer paper and make it as big as you'd like. Uh, we've picked canvases specifically that are just bigger than regular printer paper so that any design that you print as large as the page should work. You'll go ahead and lay it down on your canvas as centered as you would like it. And then from there, you'll go ahead and using tape you have at home, there is no additional tape, unfortunately, in the kit, but any tape you have at home will do. Um, if you have masking tape, I recommend it, or scotch tape, anything stronger will probably rip your paint off. Um, so I'm gonna use masking tape here and I'm gonna tape the top and bottom down exactly where I want the bird. Now you'll notice that when I do this, if you can kind of see through the canvas here, the bird is on both the white and the blue side. That's intentional. We want the design to be split not necessarily evenly, but at least a little bit between the two sides because we're gonna use two different color threads to make the design look really cool and inverse. So now that it's taped and it's secure and I've got it where I want it, I'm going to very carefully take my needle and these are sharp needles because they're meant to go through the canvas. So be careful when you're using this. So I'm gonna take my needle and along the line created by my design, I'm going to poke through the paper and through the canvas every few centimeters or so. So if I poke here, got it right here, then I'm gonna move it a few centimeters along the line, poke again, poke again, 
poke again. And you want to do this all along your design. And you want to make sure you're going through the paper and the canvas. That way, when you remove the paper, which you'll save to use as a guide, your design is already sort of ready for you to stitch right in there. Um, I do recommend going smaller when you've got kind of sharp angles. So kind of making your holes closer together when you're at things like this loop down here or this up here. Uh, that way you've got nice rounded edges wherever you can get them. So anywhere where it's nice and rounded, maybe space out your holes a little bit less. On a straight line or a less curved line, you can do them a little bit more. Uh, but generally a couple of centimeters is what I recommend. So you'll go ahead and poke your design all into your canvas. Uh, I'm going to pause the video, and when you're done, uh, come back to the video. All right. Once you've poked all of your holes and your design is ready to go, I've gone ahead and done that. And again, while you're doing it, make sure you're holding onto your needle very tight. You don't want to drop it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my needle back in my felt for safekeeping while I do this next part. Uh, you can go ahead and take your pattern right off. Uh, you'll want to save it as a guide because all you'll have on this kind of canvas is kind of poke dots. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but there are... There we go. Uh, there are some dots poked and that's your pattern. That's exactly where you're going to stitch. So you don't have to guess about where you're going to sew. Your holes are already made. That's exactly where your thread is going to go. Now, the really cool part of this is that we're going to be sewing what, with what we call inverse colors. So on the white side of the canvas, we're going to be using the thread that matches our colorful side. And on the colorful side, we're going to be using white thread. It's going to look really continuous and seamless and really, really cool. So what you want to do is prep your uh, the color thread you want to use first. Uh, for the sake of being able to see it, I'm going to use white thread on my blue background first. All right, I've got a nice long piece of white thread. I've tied a double knot at the end. That way it won't move through the canvas, pull through any of the holes. Uh, you can make it as long or short as you want. I recommend if you're able to kind of keep it from knotting, uh, go a little bit longer, uh, not too long, but that way uh, you'll be able to get as much done as you can without having to knot behind the back and cut another piece of thread. Um, so then you will take your thread, go ahead and thread it through your needle can be a little difficult. There are six pieces. If you need to wet it, go ahead and do that. And then once you have your needle threaded, all right, I had to pause for a minute to get my string threaded. Uh, once you have your needle threaded, you'll want to make sure that the tail that doesn't have the knot is pulled down sort of close, maybe, you know, six inches or so away from the knot at the end. You want the string that you're working with to be as short as possible. So if you only leave an inch of tail, you've got so much string to pull through. So if you pull your, your tail here close to your knot, so long as you're not, you, you keep adjusting so that it never gets caught in your canvas, it'll be a lot easier to maneuver. So we're gonna find a spot to start on our blue side. I recommend starting somewhere near the seam. That's what I'm gonna refer to the line between the white and the blue as. So a dot as close to your seam as possible. That way it'll be pretty seamless where you start your blue, where you start your white thread. So I've gone ahead and poked it through the hole closest to my seam down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a stitch. And my first stitch is I'm just gonna pull straight up, up until I hit the knot. And then I'm going to poke it through the next hole in the canvas that is on the blue side. So that's right here, staying on the blue side with my white thread and sticking to the holes I had already poked. And that's my first stitch. Now from there, you'll see that we did a stitch, but if we were to come up again on the next hole, we'd have a space. If I were to come up here, let me see if I can, I can demonstrate here. If I were to come up here, I'd have a space. There's a space here where I haven't sewn. Um, if I were to sew the same way. So, and if I were to come up in the same place I just went down, I'd undo my stitch. So we're gonna do what's called a back stitch. This is a very common embroidery stitch. I use it a lot when I do crafts at home. So I am gonna pull through this same hole, the next one in the, in the, in the sequence, the next one in my line. And again, it's really helpful to figure out where your line is because you often have a lot of dots in the same place uh, to go ahead and use your, uh, your poked uh, guide uh, to keep you. So I'm gonna do this down here. So I've got my stitch through the thread. Here's my other stitch. I wanna connect them. So I'm gonna take my needle and go back straight down through the hole where my last stitch ended. That's gonna create one continuous line. So I'll go ahead and pull that through. Sometimes you gotta pull from the back a little bit. It gets caught. There we go. So now I have two stitches that create one continuous line. There's no space between them. They are one continuous stitch. And you'll keep doing that all along 
the, the blue side. And then once you kind of hit the edge of your seams, you'll go ahead and do that on the white side. That's called backstitching. So you'll come up on the next hole, bring it back down on the one where you just went down. And you'll do that over and over and over until you have done all of the stitching on, with the white thread on your blue side. And then you can switch to the blue thread on the white side, or in some cases, pink, purple, or yellow. So go ahead and start stitching, create your back stitch. Sometimes it does take a couple uh, tries to get the, the needle in the right place. That's absolutely fine. Your thread will cover anything that you kind of poke through that isn't directly the hole you've already po uh, poked. And it's okay to have a little bit of practice the first time. If you need to practice on some paper, the, like, like your guide, go ahead and do that to get the hang of what it's like to use the needle and thread because it can be a little bit cumbersome sometimes. Um, but yeah, so once you get to a point where you need to switch threads, you'll switch threads um, by knotting them in the back. So let me demonstrate that for you now. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've finished our white thread. It's all done, all of the blue is covered with the white thread. Uh, we've picked up and started again where we've needed to. Um, and we've, on the back, used the string in the back to go ahead and tie a knot. That way it does not come undone. I've done a double knot there and trimmed it off. Uh, now I've got my blue thread, it's double knotted at the end, same as it was with the white. Um, and I'm gonna pick up at a spot where the blue and white meet because that's the easiest place to start. So I will, starting where there's already at the start of a stitch, um, where there's white, I will go ahead and poke my needle through. It's right here. Bring it up, do that same starting stitch, where I pull it all the way through, and then bring it down. And if you get tied up with a knot or anything, just pull your string back. Go ahead and undo your knot carefully with your fingers and then pull it straight through. And now I've got a blue stitch next to a white stitch down here. And I can keep going with my back stitch the same way I was doing before. So using my needle, I will come up over the next poked hole, bring up my needle, wiggle it through if it gets stuck a little bit because the thread is a little bit thick, and then bring it back down at the edge of the last stitch I sewed. Bring it through. The thread is getting a little bit stuck here. Again, if you need to pull it back out to undo any knotting that you encounter, just do so very carefully. Be gentle with the thread. If you need to tie a knot and use new thread because the thread is not cooperating, absolutely fine. You've got an entire skein of thread to use. And so there we go. We started our blue and uh, you can go ahead and using the lines you've got left, finish up your stitch. And once you've finished up your blue and you've or your other color and you've knotted it in the back using the stitches in the back as an anchor, you're done. You'll see that in certain places it looks a little bit uneven or the stitches are uneven. That's part of the charm. It's all handmade and it looks fantastic. Um, you can do the stitches all different sizes. Sometimes you'll have multiple stitches kind of meeting at one point, like right here. Um, but there's our bird and it looks pretty similar to our guide right here. And that's how you do an embroidered DIY canvas. Uh, enjoy doing these. I think they're so much fun. Again, these were found and inspired by crafts on TikTok. We'll be doing new TikTok crafts every single month um, as Megan takes. So go ahead and check out our website, winnetcolibrary.org, to see when we have our next one going. Uh, happy crafting. Bye, everybody.